Uh, Mike Selsky is the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer columnist. He's covered the uh, 76ers for nearly 20 years. And uh, Mike joins us on the program. All right, Mike, what do you think the mood is with uh, Sixer fans? I think the uh, Philadelphia police need to guard all the bridges in and around the city um, because there's going to be some people heading there and um, ready to take the deep plunge, not to be too dark about it. Where do you think the anger lies? A lot of it at Ben Simmons. A lot of it at Ben Simmons. Um, Because Ben violated kind of the first rule of Philadelphia sports, which is you can go down, but you better go down trying. And the fact that he kind of withered away at the end there, didn't want, clearly didn't want the ball in his hands. Um, You know, that passed up dunk is going to be the subject of documentary filmmaking for years to come, I think. And then you had Doc when he was questioned after the game, can you win a championship with him? And he, he answered it honestly. I was surprised he did saying, I don't know that. Where prior to this, it felt like Doc was always there to remind the media, Ben Simmons is a special player. Can you, can they win a championship with Ben Simmons? They can win a championship with Ben Simmons, I think. I don't think they can win a championship with Ben Simmons as their point guard. Uh, you can't have a point guard abdicating his role in the offense uh, completely to the degree that, that Simmons does. Um, I mean, he just stands there under the basket and becomes a non-factor, a non-option. You can't even throw him the ball because he doesn't want to go to the foul line. Um, it's a, it's a really complex, bad situation in that he's gotten worse in that regard since he's been in the league. I mean, his numbers were all down this season. There's been a lot made in Philadelphia about how Doc Rivers was going to be the, the new coach who was going to come in and, you know, unleash Ben. But if you look at Ben's numbers and you watch the quality of his play over the course of the season, he did not improve as a player under Doc. He got worse. And then he doesn't even attempt field goals in the fourth quarter. I mean, that, I mean, that's so telling here, Mike, that he, and the mental aspect of this, this isn't something you just go into a gym and say, hey, come on in and shoot some free throws. Like this, there's more to this than just, we're going to fix your form, which would be really difficult to do as well. Do the, do the 76ers yeah. have the infrastructure to be able to do this and, and say, all right, hey, we're going to take time. We learn, you know, from previous players that, you know, have <laughs> the yips, shooting yips. Well, well, I mean, Dan, let's let's be honest about this. They, as it turned out, they drafted players number one overall in back-to-back seasons in Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz, yeah. who can't shoot. I mean, this is, and it's not, you know, they try and they can't do it. They had a mental block about it. And we can, and you're right, we can talk all we want about Simmons' form. And I've written columns about this, about how his elbow flares out and his form is terrible and he's ambidextrous and maybe we'd be, it would be better if he weren't. It's not about the form anymore. He does not want to go to the foul line. Um, And to answer your question about whether the Sixers can sort this out, they had a dry run at this with Markel Fultz, and they weren't able to do it. And now you've got it with Simmons all over again. And I think the worst part of it is, is that his teammates see it and they know it. You watch that clip of that passed up dunk again. You see Joel Embiid putting his hands in the air. Like, what are you doing, Ben? Just throw the ball down. And you know, that kind of thing gums up an offense. It, it creates tension on a team where a team can't afford it. Um, it, it you know, the, the scuttlebutt in Philadelphia is that this is it for Ben Simmons there. And I, at this point, I find it hard to disagree. Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out of, do, does this become a Carson Wentz-like situation that, that you almost feel like you have to let him go for the betterment of both the organization and the quarterback? I think it's starker than the Wentz situation. There was still some debate and divide in Philadelphia over whether they, the Eagles ought to keep Wentz, whether the problems that the Eagles went through last season were solely on Wentz or mostly on Wentz. You know, there were questions about the offensive line, all that kind of stuff. This is far more naked. You can see it. He does not want to participate in the offense. And you can see how that trickles down. Look, Joel Embiid had eight turnovers last night, and that's bad. And he didn't rise to the occasion in the way that, Kevin Durant did or Giannis did the other night, but he's not the kind of player who you want creating off the dribble. You need a player, a point guard who can get a player like Embiid and a player like Tobias Harris into the flow of an offense. And right now the Sixers don't have that and everybody can see it. And all those eyes are going to one place and that's Ben Simmons. So what do you do in the off season? Is, is there a trade market for Ben Simmons? 
That's a great question. I mean, look, Daryl Morey tried during the season. I mean, they came very close to making that deal for James Harden. Um, you know, they, they wanted Harden. They were willing to move Simmons to get it. The irony of all that is that Simmons came back after that trade fell through and Harden ended up with the Nets and played great for a while. Um, but I think, is there, is there the market that there once was? No, there can't possibly be after these seven games that he played against the Hawks. But I think Maury's going to have to try to get creative because if they bring him back and they try to run this back without making some significant changes, boy, it's going to be a hard go for them next year in the city. Is the process still going on, Mike? <laughs> you know, I feel like, Dan, I was an advocate of the process. I loved what Sam Hinkie was doing. I felt like the process sort of kind of ended once he resigned. Um, there's been so much upheaval and so many changes since then. They've gone through Brian Colangelo. They went through a year without really a GM where they ended up trading away Mikel Bridges for Zaire Smith. Um, you know, they, they let Jimmy Butler walk and, and signed Tobias Harris instead. Uh, there, you know, now we have Doc and Daryl, you know, in here. Um, the, the process has ended. Um, I think we're far enough removed from what Hinky was doing and was trying to do to say, look, you know, they took a big swing. It didn't work. And in some ways, Philadelphia was kind of the worst place for it, for trying something like this, because Philadelphia sports fans and, and sports followers are most comfortable in like a defensive crouch, right? They don't <laughs> want to leave themselves open to the possibility of failure. They want to protect themselves as much as they can. That's why the series lost hurts so much, Dan, is that the Sixers were favored. It was one thing to have the Eagles beat the Patriots when Nick Foles, the backup, is leading them to championship glory. It's another thing when it, a team is supposed to win a series. Philadelphia hates that. I use the analogy that if you could have Ben Simmons in a role that's similar to Draymond Green with Golden State, where he's the third or fourth option, where you, you know, his passing, defense, and rebounding, if there's a way to kind of, and it's, it sounds strange to say it, that you got to kind of hide him or put him in a position where he can succeed, this is all you ask him to do. And I don't know if that's possible. I, I'm not sure it is either not with the money he's making mm -hmm. i mean can you afford under the salary cap to have a guy who makes 30 40 million dollars a year you know be draymond green i mean nothing against draymond he's a terrific player but you know he wasn't steph curry he wasn't kevin durant he wasn't clay thompson so you know what do you do if you're the sixers as you said you can't really hide a guy who's making that much money uh just gives you more to write mike they they just they, they write these columns for you <laughs> Hey, I'll take it, man. I'll take it every time. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Dan. Appreciate it. Mike Sealski, who uh, writes for the Philadelphia Inquirer.